Yesterday I was at IKEA because I needed some storage boxes and uh, I found this. Yes, yet another LED light bulb. This is the new 13 watt IKEA Lab Diary and it puts out a thousand lumens. Now, uh, why did I get it? Well, because it was cheap, very cheap. Now, this is my benchmark, a Philips Master LED bulb, and it's also 13 watt, uh, 1055 lumens light bulb. But this one here cost 35 euros, while this one here, only 10. But are those 10 euros worth it? Now, before opening the package, I would like to see some of the information that they're reading on it. First of all, it's dimmable, uh, it's got a lifetime of 20, oh, 25,000 hours, and it turns on in less than a second. And those are exactly the same values you'll see onto the Philips. So this seems like a pretty good light bulb. Also, if you look at the back, you'll see that it's got a CRI greater than 87. This means that the light it produces is very similar to the one you'll see from a standard incandescent light bulb which is also a pretty good factor. So, it's got really good specs, but doesn't match up to the Philips. Now, I've managed to take it out of the package without cutting myself, and, uh, well, here's the light bulb. The bulb itself is made out of plastic, and I think it's glued in, because if I push it on, it seems like it's starting to tear. And the heatsink, well, seems quite small uh, and undersized, for a 13 watt light. Uh, I had um, IKEA light bulbs fail on me some time ago. So, just to be sure, I'm gonna put the box. Now, unfortunately, my Philips light bulb is buried inside this fan and uh, it's quite hard to get it out. So, I think I'll have to find a plan B. I'm now in my workshop and I found a solution. So those are my Ferox, and they are my, uh, one, of my one of the best built bulbs I've ever seen, and uh, also my long my long lasting bulbs since I've got them for quite some time, and none of them have failed. So rather than checking for light quality, I'm going to check for durability. So let's see. How the IKEA reforms. Here it is. Let's remove the other one so we don't clutter lights. And uh, we're ready for a test drive. So here we go. First power up. Will it work? Yes, it does. And wow, that's amazing. It really is quite a lot of light. And they are also quite correct about the CRI because if I point at a colored object, uh, this is not quite colorful. Oh, those are nice, very nice old caps. You can really see that colors do shine quite a bit, which is also really nice if you do uh, some videos. Look at also those red in the background, it's a really nice uh, red, it really pops. That's not bad, actually. And yes, it puts out quite a big amount of light. I've tested the Philips right here, just when I got it, and it was pretty much the same thing. So yeah, I'm quite satisfied with this. I'm gonna let it run for quite some time and see how hot it gets, because I don't think that that heatsink is big enough for a 13 watt LED light bulb. I mentioned durability before because I had some. Oh, I don't like to focus. Because I had some of those uh, uh, IKEA small LED light bulbs fail on me. And I think there were four or five of them. I've got one here which I've torn apart. And yeah, they're very cheaply made. Uh, there is an LED array which is screwed onto those three screws, and under there, there is a power supply. The power supply is not potted. So all the heat from the components it is not transferred to the heatsink. So yeah, they've done some cost cutting and uh, well, they've missed a few steps in engineering or um, testing for these light bulbs. This is a 3.5 watt light bulb 
and uh, it's rated at 55 lumens per watt. So this means that the new one is also more efficient at 76, was it, lumens per watt. Now looking inside one of those power supplies, you can see that they are very uh, simple. We've got an inductor here, smoothing capacitor, which is from a brand that I don't know, but it's only rated, oh no, it's good, it's rated for 125 degrees, so that's a good feature. And obviously, yeah, it didn't fit, it's not bulging. So I think that one of those um, surface mount components decided to quit. Hmm. Well, I'll test the other light bulb, the new 1000 lumens one, and we'll see if it has to come back to IKEA. Now, looking at the viewfinder from my camera, I can see that there is some flickering, which are those bars that are, that are moving. And in fact, if I put a solar panel connected to an oscilloscope, I can see that flicker. As you can see, once you get closer, you can really start to see it. So that's really bad. It's not good for video, even even if it has a really good CRI. It's actually pretty bad, so... Mm, I don't know. Now, after I miserably failed the flicker test, it's uh, now time to remove it. And hopefully I won't... Oh, it's not that hot, actually. I'm not touching the heatsink yet, because I don't want to get a nasty surprise. But here it is. The bulb. Is it hot? Oh, yes, it is. It's definitely quite hot. It's definitely not touchable. So I think that putting it in a closed fixture would be a bit of a problem. And it's been on for 20 minutes or so, so... That's actually quite bad as well. Wow, I cannot touch it, really. Mmm, that's bad. So I'm going to put back those flower rocks. You can also see now that the scope is not uh, showing any trace, so it's not my scope that's acting funny. It's really old, but it's not <laughs> unreliable. So I've got the ferox back in. Let me just power them up. Here they are. Those are 6 watt light bulbs, so they're not as bright, obviously. But, as you can see, I'm going to put the DC so you can just see, you can see the light amount changes when it just get closer. Now, you can see that there is no flicker whatsoever, because those are nicely made bulbs. Exactly as I said. So, well, it's still very hot. So it really needs a bigger heatsink. A much bigger heatsink. Because I cannot hold it in my hand. So, mm, yes, it costs 9.99 euros. But for around 10 euros, mm, I don't think it's that worth it. Because I'm pretty positive that it will die pretty soon but the good thing is is when it dies yes I'm going to tear it apart and for the moment yeah if I need a really powerful light bulb I'll stick with the 35 euros Philips